What's up, everybody? This is Porter here. Just wanted to let you guys know real quick. Blake and I unfortunately weren't able to get together to record a new episode this week, but we did want to bring back a classic. It came from September 12th of last year, and it's called Insurance Company Mascots and the Worst Place Winner. On this episode, you're going to get some absolute amazing slander against some of the most terrible mascots insurance companies have ever come up with. It's a really fun segment. We do a draft, and then we also have some listener submitted questions that we get into. We're going to talk about some unpopular opinions, and it's just over all a great show. We will be back next week with a brand new episode where we are going to be talking about more embarrassing elementary school stories. So make sure you send those in over to us on Instagram at PM and the AM podcast. Thanks so much for your support. We look forward to being back next week with a new episode and enjoy the show. Wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. Welcome back to another episode here on the PM and the AM podcast. This is Porter McNeely here alongside Blake Bushman. Blake, how's it going today? It's fantastic, man. You know what? Football's back, so I've been in a good mood. And you know what? I'm always happy to do the podcast. I know. We absolutely have had no life-changing, devastating bad news today. So we're just thriving out here, having an absolutely great time. We're really excited for this week's content that we have coming yeah, we're up. Sorry, we're sorry if today's episode is a little more somber. Nothing happened. Yeah. But, you know. We may, we may figure something out and address it in a future episode, but we don't want to put a damper on this episode because we are really excited. We've got some really great things coming up, and we're just overall happy to be back. Thanks for everybody who checked out our last week's episode. We got a couple submissions of the Disney brackets. Blake, what did you think overall of our fans' movie choices? You know what? I got to... I gotta respect respect the opinions. Obviously, nobody's opinion is as good as my own, but uh, I, I did I did receive some support from some people that I know are um, avid Disney and Pixar fans, so it, it, that really meant a lot to me. And I yeah, I'll, I'll respect their opinions. Yeah, out of the comments, I remember number one, I got flamed. My picks were apparently terrible, and I think we had Bugs Life a little low. I think that was yeah. kind, of, kind of a theme that, that was we saw. The, yeah, that was the consensus. I think is that. Bugs Life should have been a little higher. Although, to be fair, to defend ourselves, we both did say that. Well, I guess I don't know if you did because you said you were terrified of it. I did say that Bug Life is probably one of the most underrated. It just had been so long since I had seen it that I I couldn't put it as high as some of the others. But yeah, and like right after we went off the air, and I started thinking about you know the era that Bugs Life came out in, there weren't really movies like that. Oh, it was way ahead of its and, time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's what I was thinking of afterwards, and I had to give it s- some more credit after thinking about when it came out versus these new ones that come out, and they can just pump them out with new technology and stuff. That was pretty cutting edge, so it deserved some extra points for that. Yeah, yeah, and the fat cat- caterpillar is uh, still hilarious. So. <laughs> still hilarious. You know, I I did look at uh, look at my rankings, and you know, there's probably a couple of things that I would change now that I've had more time to think about it, but. You know, overall, I'm, I'm happy with it, and I think the the morning people had some some good opinions. And I hope we spread some joy around having people kind of go back and, and watch some Pixar movies maybe this week. Um, on this episode, we're going to turn our bracket section. We're going to have it back again, but it's going to be way different than last time. So this time, you know, how many insurance commercials do you think you've seen just this year alone, Blake? Uh, just this year? Uh, give or take... 45 million. <laughs> exactly. They're always on. Now, okay, of those 45 million, how many do you think have been unique or like just different commercials? That's a really good point. Probably <clears throat> six. Yeah, like a <laughs> tiny amount because all they do is just replay the same ones and they've got the same mascots. And so today we have decided to rank the most annoying insurance mascots we're going to have a bracket we're going to have you guys voting on our social media so stay tuned that will be coming up later in the episode both blake and i are really excited to do this segment like he said these are commercials that get driven into the ground they overplay them they're on every program so excited to, to see what we can come up with there but before we get into that blake we asked the, qu- the listeners a question last week and that was what is the worst thing you've said or been told in a job interview And I want to go ahead and get started with some of the submissions we got across social media. And this one is just brutal. So this one comes in and it says, wow, so you were the only applicant, huh? On second thought, 
I think we'll just sell the company. What? <laughs> so I, I had to start no. with that one because that is absolutely brutal. I mean, I don't know if I would continue applying for jobs at that point or just say I'm unemployable. Uh, that's <laughs> That's got to be really terrible. I, I can't imagine a scenario being told that. That at that point you just got to pull a power move and buy the company. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, you're like bet, put it up for sale. Can, can you imagine being so? Oh, you're the only one that applied. Uh, <laughs> all right, I quit. Like, I know that's <laughs> like the most rude thing you could possibly say to a person. Oh man. On the other hand, here we got one that said the interviewer told me she thought I was too nice to work there. Ooh, okay. So, so like, what kind of place? Total one eighty. What kind of place? <laughs> it's like a Walmart, and they're like, nope, you're friendly. This is not going to work out. You have to be mean. <laughs> yeah. What place has the worst customer service? That Maybe they the only post office? Employ? It was probably an airline customer okay. service. Airline that's, customer that, service? That's what, I, that's what I like to believe. Is because Anytime I've had to talk to airline customer service, Ooh. they have been just absolutely awful. What if it Terrible. was the DMV? Ooh, oh, DMV, probably. Yeah. That could have been a, yeah, imagine applying there. The, the whole you're, application you're process way. is probably <laughs> like to see how much of a just absolute, like you're not going to flinch. You're just like a stone cold, no personality. Like that's what they're checking for, I think. Yeah, yeah. No, they, they you also have to move under a certain like speed. <laughs> like if, you can't work there if you're too nice or if you move too fast. No, so yeah, it's, that's, uh, <laughs> it's true. Yeah, that's that's probably what it was. So uh, hopefully they found a job at Chick Fil A because I think they accept nice people. Oh yeah, that's a good point. If if that was you, go ahead and move on over to there, and I'm sure Chick Fil A <laughs> will treat you just right. Yeah, at least they didn't tell you that they were gonna sell the company. <laughs> because yeah, you wow. To on work. your behalf, man, that's crazy. <laughs> All right, so going back to another one, we got one that just said that they weren't tall enough. So I had to follow up and ask huh? what the job was. And NBA. <laughs> no, that's what I was kind of thinking. I was going to try and write some sort of funny response, but I didn't want to like offend anyone. So I was just like, what was the job? And it said, Gaios chicken. <laughs> and so <laughs> it also goes on to say, I'm fairly sure that they've gone out of business in that, at that location. So I, I didn't know, like they weren't, they weren't tall enough to be preparing the chicken. I, I didn't look it up. I don't know what that kind of chicken place is. But I just was assuming it'd be like MBA or something like that, you know? It's a chicken place. No, they, <laughs> they're they're like... trying to get a job at KFC. I wonder if it, okay, now, without, be, without being like too insensitive here, I wonder if they were like, you know, like a like a dwarf or whatever, like oh, the people who were gosh. super short. And then they just like straight up couldn't see over the over the table well, or something. Like, if they were, I'm sure they won a massive lawsuit because you can't just go around saying that to people. So That's true, actually, yeah. I mean, they got to find ways to be more inclusive to to everyone. But yeah, I guess that manager was just like looking for an excuse. Maybe there was other things not right about this candidate. And they're just like, you know what? I'm just going to say uh, you're if, not tall enough. <laughs> if you're looking for an excuse, that is not the way to go. <laughs> yeah, that's, that would be a pretty bad thing to hear, I would say. You know how easy it is to just not hire somebody? Like you don't have yeah. to insult them in the same Yeah, you're just like, we'll get back to you within a week. Never happens. Oh man, that's that's brutal. We uh I I got another one here that we got sent in. And this one's a little bit of a story, but it's this was the the interview we that that said this one, but they said that I got asked to describe myself with a song. They told me to take as much time as I needed, but my mom and my aunt had a running joke that my theme song was Man Eater. So I went Blake <laughs> and looked at the two interviewers in the face and said, "Man Eater." Was, <laughs> Was the way that they would describe themselves. That's the awesome! Song. I bet those two interviewers got instantly scared. They're like, "Who the heck are we interviewing right now?" That's amazing. <laughs> I, they were both men. I, I I assume so. They didn't specify, but I'm gonna go based <laughs> off of what I hope is real. Yes, they were both men. That's awesome. They were probably like, "Man, uh, this this is the feminist we need in our corner." You know, <laughs> this this is amazing. So, tell me a little bit about yourself. I eat men. <laughs> I'm a man eater. <laughs> I'm coming for both of your jobs, and I'm get, gonna get you both canceled. <laughs> oh yeah, no, great song though. Great. So I don't know if that's the way you want to describe yourself, but no, re really solid. <laughs> no, that's an awesome story. One of the most common ones I think we got sent in was just overqualification. So we got that a few times. Personally, like I don't think I've ever applied for a job I'm overqualified for, but I think that would feel really cool. If they just are straight up like, you are too good to work here. Yeah, and you're like, yeah, you're right, and just walk out. You're like, I don't even know why I, I'm here. Yeah, that I think that that is just a nice way of saying, we don't want to pay you as oh, much as yeah. we should. That's a good like, point. I feel like, 
I feel like you would want people who are overqualified. I feel like that would be good for your company. You just don't want to pay them to be overqualified. Yeah, that's fair. So that's probably, uh, I mean, if you're an interviewer, that's a nice way to get out of not wanting to pay somebody. That is a good excuse. Not my go-to there. Did we get any any others sent in? I think we had one more. Let me double check. Oh, yeah, I, I have one more here, okay. actually. This, this one's nice and short. They just said they need to take a vacation before they start. <laughs> okay, I like that. That's crazy, though. So I guess, I, I, I imagine that when a little bit like this, you know, they're sitting down. Oh, great. We, we, you know, we want to hire you. When can you start? And you just look them in the face and say, well, actually, I'm going to want to take a vacation first. So I'm going <laughs> to. I mean, it makes sense if they're coming in between jobs. But couldn't they just say, like, I can't start until this date and go on a vacation and not tell the employer they're already, like, tired and exhausted? And, no, you know, you kind of want to be firing honest. on all cylinders when you get a new job. So I think that that's too much transparency there. I would personally plan out, I'm going to need these other two weeks to kind of do the transition thing. And that's when you go to wherever you're going to go, take a nice tropical vacation, unwind. But you don't want to set yourself up to going into somewhere and they're like, oh, well, maybe we made the wrong decision. Yeah, no, it- Truth be told, it's best to just lie at that point, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Something Blake constantly promotes. Yeah, lying. Okay, wait, there was another episode recently where I said that lying is is helpful. <laughs> See, it's just part of your personality at this point. Yeah, I mean, that's it really is. You can't deny that in certain situations, it's for the best. <laughs> I would call it consider it stretching the truth on my end just because I don't want to label myself a liar, but it does have its advantages at times, I will say. I'm not All perfect. Right. There, there, there you have it, <laughs> listeners. But thank you for everybody who submitted your anonymous uh, answers on this question. We've got another question coming up that is kind of the what are some unpopular opinions that we have. I'm going to go ahead and go first because as I was eating a, a package of trail mix, I actually thought of this unpopular opinion. I'm actually a big fan of raisins, which I know is contrary to a lot of people's uh, belief system. What do you think about that, Blake? About raisins? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't eat them if I... I don't willingly eat them by choice for fun. Like, I couldn't tell you... If I ever went to the store and saw a box of raisins and was like, mmm, I, w- I just would never do that. We have a box of raisins at my work right now, like a, like boxes of raisins. And I don't think anybody's eaten them in any of the time that I've been there. We've had a many, a, many a snacks come and go, but the raisins have sat there for... A very long time. Dude, I'm telling you, put the raisins in the fridge and then a nice cold raisin, delicious. So that's you my... Know what's be- you want to know what's better than that? Uh, a yeah. grape. Okay, but... An actual not not dried out grape. See, I, I think they're kind of even to me, honestly, and which is less perishable. Oh, get out of here. <laughs> raisins are good. Less, that's my unpopular opinion. Less perishable. Now, <laughs> here's Mike. What what happens in the, in the raisining process that makes them less perishable? Like, I feel like... It's still a fruit, right? Just a dried version of the fruit? Yeah, but you know, like dried bananas and apples, you can put those in your food storage for a hundred years and then eat them. I think it must be whatever the moisture is that they take out of them. Oh, I guess that makes sense. All right. Tune in next week as we de-moisturize fruit. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see. We'll see what lasts longest. No, I mean, that's that's a solid unpopular opinion because that's pretty unpopular. As far as my unpopular opinions go, I mean, I've made one thing abundantly clear on this podcast in many episodes. That Popeyes is better than Chick Fil A. Now that's just I have many unpopular opinions, but I had to get that one out of the way because I can't let the <laughs> listeners forget. They need constant reminders, I guess. Yeah, no, that's true. And uh, we it wasn't it wasn't our blind taste test that we did, but there was another person I saw that did one, and Popeyes came out on top. So I I wanted to throw that out there. But uh, I have I have a couple more here that I that I thought of as as I was thinking about it, and. Going along with food, pie is better than cake. Wow. Okay. Like, I would much rather have a birthday pie. Okay. What what flavor? Oh, any flavor. Wow. Okay. Well, maybe okay. not maybe not any flavor, but most <laughs> flavors. I think pie is probably the most overrated dessert. You I just, just said, don't think it's that good. Wait, you ice just cream, said pie is most overrated or cake? Or cake. Cake. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I misspoke. Uh, I, I think ice cream cake is good, but like just regular cake... That's... I don't know. Like a really good cake is really good, but like the average cake versus the average pie, pie is way better. No, that's a that's a interesting unpopular opinion. I don't know. It for me it depends on the pie and depends on the cake. So it's hard for me to agree or or, or go against this opinion because yeah, some moist cake, oh, delicious. But also some to me I love a, a lemon meringue pie. 
Oh, uh, yeah. A cherry pie, key pumpkin lime. pie, key lime pie. Banana cream. Banana cream's not really my thing, but I can understand why some people like it. But oh. yeah, it's, it's so good. Fruit pies for me and then pumpkin as well are, are definitely up there. I really do look forward to the upcoming Thanksgiving Ooh. holiday because of it. So you just I can made me see think that. of another. You just made me think of another unpopular opinion. Pumpkin pie is the worst pie. Dude, no way. You're not American. Oh, get out of here. There's nothing American about a pumpkin pie. Yeah, it is. It's what the founding fathers made on Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> that's do you that's think American that's actually enough for me. Do you think that's actually what they ate? I bet. Where did it, where else did it come from? Pumpkin pie? Yeah. I don't know. Big Thanksgiving? <laughs> Big Thanksgiving is pushing pumpkin pies, yeah. yeah. They're behind yeah, it all. <laughs> They're behind the avian bird flu that's driving turkey, big turkey. prices up. <laughs> big big turkey is is behind pumpkin pie. All right. That's it wasn't crazy. it wasn't a real thing. I'm gonna look when the real when the first pumpkin pie was made. No, I wanna see this. Yeah, I actually do. All right, because I'm curious. I have I have another one here though. While I'm looking this up, I'll uh I'll let you stew over it. Because this is one that I think a lot of people will really probably disagree with. But phones and electronics, you know, listening to us is actually good. Hmm. How so? Okay, I have a confession to make before I get into that. Okay, let's hear the confession first because I think I know where you're going with this. According to <laughs> tippinpies.com. I'm on the same website. <laughs> early American settlers of the Plymouth Colony in southern New England have made... In nineteen or in 1621, may have made pumpkin pies. So, so is that uh, a full confession or like a half confession uh, that you were wrong? <laughs> to be fair, it does say that it was probably a different kind, but I do concede that. <laughs> okay, thank you. All it's right. American. Anyway, okay, we move go, on. Going back to uh, to the phones listening to us, people that are so up in arms about oh the, you know the government's listening to us and blah, blah. i talk about how i need toothpaste and then i get an ad for toothpaste guess what that's great you are not that important you, <laughs> oh my gosh you don't matter enough for the government to listen to every single word you say like that's that's the truth people do it so that they can you know get the things that you talk about the things that you're interested in and give you targeted ads for it which okay sure it might make you a little uncomfortable but it's good because then you're getting ads for things that you're actually interested in. I don't want to receive ads for, you know, uh, tampon. Like that, that that's not that's not going to benefit me in any way. But I receive ads for golf clubs or in all sorts of things now that I am interested in. That and that is good for me. It okay, let, let me just bring up this my point. Social media pleasure. But what if you get an ad towards a product that's good? But had you not gotten that ad targeted at you, you go find a company that's better for a better price as well. Now, I usually don't buy things from the ads. That is true. I But I can sometimes see something. I'm like, oh, huh, that's kind of cool. And maybe it's something I hadn't seen before. And I'll go look it up. I'll throw it into good old Amazon or, or something like that. And I'll find something there. I usually don't buy things from the ads on it. Uh, let's, okay. let's just take Instagram, for example, because I usually feel like they're garbage. I did, did buy something one time and it never came. So, <laughs> <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's a but double-edged it's, sword. They could the recommend po- the things you want, but they could be the bad. The point is, it's doing it's doing no harm unless you like buy into something stupid like a you know a, a scam ad. But gonna like get a two scammed. for twenty four shorts and then just keep paying for it. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who would do that, Blake. Yeah, no. Well, that's that happens to the best of us, really. <laughs> but no, I, I I firmly believe that people get so up in arms about the government listening to them or whatever it is. And they think they they must think the world themselves that they are the most important people on the planet that the government actually cares what they say on a daily basis. No, well, that that's probably your most controversial, unpopular opinion because I do feel like the other ones, you know, were just less of less importance. And so yeah, that one, I think that one is buttons. gonna, I think that one is gonna uh, not resonate well with some people. But we'll have to see how that goes. You know, we all have our own unpopular opinions and. We're not trying to point any fingers at anyone or call anyone out. We're just sharing ours, and we are going to be asking you guys on Instagram to submit yours so we can share them on the show. Stick around. We'll be right back with the most annoying insurance mascots bracket. You're not going to want to miss it, so stay tuned. (laughs) 
And we are back with one of the most exciting brackets we've done in a long time. I'm super pumped for this one. I was doing some research, listening to a podcast about these insurance commercials because they have gotten out of hand, wouldn't you say, Blake? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we, we, we covered it a little bit at the start of the episode, but yeah, I mean, I just, I would like to see some more than three insurance episodes at a time. Like half, a lot of the, like the mascots are... I don't know a better like a better way to say it. Maybe like representatives are are they're not that bad, but they just get repeated so often that I get sick of seeing their face. And that plays into it quite a bit. That's a really big thing. So I guess when insurance commercials first came around, they would just be like really depressing. Like have somebody die and they didn't have like enough insurance to cover it and they're like, Do you really want to be left with thousands and thousands of debt when your loved ones die or whatever? So oh, eventually that... they Geico started that... the gecko and they started moving into these more positive we're not gonna just say the world's ending insurance commercials because people didn't generally respond well to it. So now I think we're at a point where we have too much of that. Yeah, no, I think it's gone too far the other way for sure. I mean it's It's one of those things that I get not wanting to be sad, but you also can't go into annoying. Where's the average happy medium? That's what I want to know. I know. And so that's why we wanted to do the most annoying insurance mascots. Blake, you have the first pick. Don't mess this one up, my friend. No, I... uh... I, I was happy to have the first pick on this one. I think you come into this this bracket with a lot more confidence than I do. Just <laughs> that's I like every time, you know, though. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I, although there is one that I really want because this particular person drives me up the wall, and that is Flo from Progressive. That's a really good pick. There's been so many commercials. Now she's like pretty old, you know. Like she's been doing it for so long. Oh, she's been doing it for so long. And but I can't remember I a at, single one that was good. At the start, I don't think they were as bad. Like because they had like the the little price check gun thing or whatever years ago, and yeah, you know, it really wasn't that bad. Some of them were kind of funny here and there, but then it just got so overplayed and they ran out of ideas. And oh, she's just obnoxious. Nobody likes insurance that much. All right, calm down. Uh, agreed and i honestly can't comprehend on that one it's one of them that's just head scratching why they would okay that and say man this 30 seconds of annoyance is going to make these customers want to buy progressive i guess maybe it's just sticking that into your head but i'm i'm a big advocate against them as well hopefully i will have a later selection that reflects that but with number two I could not pass up on Liberty Mutual with Lemu, Emu, and Doug. The Emu. Yeah. (laughs) Those are horrible commercials. That was next on my list, dude. (laughs) Those are terrible. There's not one that even makes sense, first of all. There's not one that would make you consider buying their insurance. And there's not one that doesn't make me turn off the TV every time. (laughs) Here's here's my problem with with Lemu, Emu, and Doug. They tried hopping onto the... uh, animal representative like you talked about the gecko and and there's there's a couple of them that have animals representing the 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 insurance and they just jumped on it too late and it just didn't work like it's just dumb and none of the commercials make any sense they really need to fire their their marketing team i i will say this too liberty mutual commercials are probably some of the most annoying behind progressives like they have the all the ones people standing out in front of like the statue of liberty that i just can't stand they're terrible i i can't imagine they pay their marketing department more than five dollars an hour for the the stuff they're churning out and then they pay millions to put it on tv they're probably like buying super bowl ads and stuff to put these terrible commercials on I would never buy Liberty Mutual. They could give me a lower rate. Wouldn't buy it because I'm not going to trust them because of Lemu, Emu, and Doug. <laughs> That's my <laughs> no, rant, no. though. That's I, my second. I pick. absolutely support that. That that would have been my next pick had you had you <laughs> not gone that way. So I'll stick along a, a pretty similar line there. You know, you just picked a bird representative, and I'm going to pick Aflac. Oh, okay, good pick. Good um, pick. Because that duck, at least the at least like the gecko has some sort of uh, you know he can talk and he sounds a personality. Yeah, all you get from Aflac in those commercials, there is no reason to have a duck representative because all it says is Aflac. Yeah, I agree. I have blown out your ears, but <laughs> I just can't stand it. I definitely had Aflac on my list for the same reason. All it is is a stupid duck. They're bringing in celebrities lately to to read the whole read off and then just have the duck come in at the end and go Aflac. So 
I'm with you. Yeah. Affleck yeah. commercials are terrible, and I don't even want to invest or buy their product because it's so terrible. Again, that's another that's another really good pick. So moving on to number four, I'm gonna go back to the Progressive family, and I'm taking uh, I Jamie from back. Progressive. You know the uh, the little hoping. skinny short guy with the faux hawk. That guy. Oh, stinks. I'm well aware. That guy yeah. stinks. I will. I will say this. He often doesn't annoy me as bad as Flo, which is why I had to go Flo first, but that combo is just it's horrendous. It's scratching There's no reason they oh, should have man. ever been put on air. They both are terrible. His jokes hit a little more often than Flo's do, so I'll give him that much, but but yeah, no, that's uh that's one of the one of the people that I'm like I I, I don't know what they were hoping to accomplish with this. His whole thing is that he's kind of like an idiot. <laughs> and I don't know if I want an idiot representing my insurance company. So, yeah, a big question mark around that one for me. Imagine when people see those two actors in public and they, they just can't stand the person already just because of the thousands of commercials that they've been forced to watch. The poor people, you know, they're suffering off of Progressive's terrible commercial team. Yeah, really, we could draft all of all of <laughs> Progressive's team. I don't know the rest of their names. Flo and Jamie are the only two that I know off the top of my head. They used to head. just have a little square thing with eyes, I think. Like a, I don't even remember Oh, what yeah, was, a long time ago. There long was time something ago, else. Yeah. I, I may have just given you a hint for later on there. Hopefully, I, I didn't spoil any of mine. I've got some more bangers. But what do you have at number five, Blake? Okay, this one is going off of the, off of the uh, more well-known people. It's actually a Geico representative. Oh. But it's it's Maxwell the Pig. Oh, no way. Do you remember that? Yeah. Wee, wee, wee. That guy. Uh, oh, yeah. It was not wee, wee, wee. It was <laughs> wee. <laughs> so annoying. <laughs> they, Geico struck gold with the gecko. You know, they, they, they do it really well. The camel was I, good, too. I, oh, the camel was great. The pig, though, that one was just obnoxious, and I, I can't get behind it. Okay. That's a, that's a fair pick. Luckily, they didn't make as many commercials with the pig. So. No, no, it was a it was a pretty short lived thing, and I think it was because people hated it. So, <laughs> all right, that moves us along to number six, and I'm glad this one didn't get taken because this is kind of off the beaten path a little bit. This one often shows up on like sports networks, so I'm not sure how familiar everyone will be with it. But I'm gonna go with the general from the general car insurance commercials. Yeah, you know what I'm talking yeah. about. Oh, of course, yeah. The lowest I, quality commercials out of any of these companies, and ninety five percent of them just involve Shaq. The weirdest thing about the like the general himself it actually isn't like that annoying. Like you know, general and save some time or whatever. <laughs> like that, like the actual general. But it, it's so weird. Like the quality of the commercials has always looked. Like it was just they had a fourteen dollar budget and had to go with it, like, and they I paid thirteen ninety five to Shaq. That yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> Shaq is probably the real representative. Of Honestly, I general. should have done Shaq because yeah, those no, I, those commercials are always like such low quality. No, that's a great pick though. That's that's honestly where I was going to go next, and Ooh. so now I'm kind of I'm kind of uh, in a in a tough spot here because I feel like after the general, there's a drop off, and it actually gets into people that I don't dislike as much. They're not as annoying but this is my last pick and so i'm gonna go and i'm gonna try to you know pluck the heartstrings here and i'm gonna go back to a commercial that was so popular that it actually sparked an entire rebrand of how they represented their company but the new jake from state farm oh sucks oh the, the okay. old jake you know with the what are you wearing jake from state farm <laughs> that's pretty funny Khaki. Oh, classic. That's one of the best com like insurance commercials ever. But the new Jake, they just tried to take the old Jake and they're like, wow, that guy was successful. Let's get rid of him and bring in somebody more attractive. I can't stand it. I think they should have kept Jake. I think he would have been great. Everybody would have loved him. But the new Jake... Just looks like a Walmart version of Drake, and so I. Uh... <laughs> That's a good point. I wouldn't have even thought about that. I like how you brought up the rebrand and everything because that man made a a legendary commercial, and then we just never got knew dumped. about him again. Yeah, he got dumped because he did so well, and they're like, "Oh crap, we need we should have done somebody you know that has." dreamy eyes wow. just dumb so uh that's the way that i'm gonna go with my last pick and i'm happy with it happy right. you made it to me very respectable pick that leaves me with the eighth and final choice in this bracket and i'm going to take professor burke from farmer's insurance oh no those are great what are you talking about i think i mean some of them are good some of them are not good 
Farmers is saved by the We Are Farmers. Bum, bada, bum, 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 bada, bum, 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 bum. That was the best thing they ever did. If they just played that on a, a, a loop two or three times and took up the whole time, I would enjoy it every time. Probably be humming it in my head for the rest of the week. But the Professor no, Burke guy... He's J.K. Simmons. He's a famous actor. He's great. For me, doesn't get the job done. It's the eighth He's... pick, so obviously that's my favorite out of the group. I couldn't it's really J. come Jonah up with Jameson anything else. And from Spider-Man. That's who, that's who you just picked. I want you to know that. That's fine with Terrible. me because I also think he's kind of annoying in Spider-Man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sticking with him at the eight. I know I don't have a good chance of winning already as it is, just, just me being me. But I just wanted to throw that out there just in case. You know, I had to pick an eighth spot. But overall, That's I think fair. we have there, a really there weren't good very list. many. There weren't very many annoying ones left. I mean, the only other two I had listed were were because they were the only other two I could think of were Mayhem and the Gecko. But I like both of those more than a lot of the other ones. So yeah, I, I, I agree. Couldn't pick them. Mayhem is personally my favorite, and then followed by the Gecko. So uh huh. I yep. agree with those picks. Uh, if we missed any, make sure to let us know about them. We'd want to hear about it we're going to be posting this bracket as always on monday so you can take a look at it then on tuesday we'll start the voting we want to make sure all of you guys get involved let us know what we did right what we did wrong and unbiased please pick a winner i'd love to win if possible this week maybe once would be nice if not whatever <laughs> you're pandering to the people right now to try to get them to vote for you to Is the 10 percent of listeners that are still listening at this point please vote for me no, don't <laughs> you, vote you can for always just throw because, in just because he's too, pleading Blake. You can throw in your pitch uh, if you want to, Blake. He, here's my pitch. If you have to beg for votes, <laughs> you probably shouldn't be voted for. The the good thing is I'm going to edit this podcast, Blake, and I'm going to cut that whole thing out. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I'm going to let it ride. Thanks for tuning in this week. We had a great bracket section, a great question. And we're really grateful for all you guys that have listened this far. Please make sure to share the, the show with a friend. You've been laughing this whole time, so give the gift of laughter and let somebody else enjoy it. Please leave us a review on Apple and Spotify. We love to have that review so we can move up on on whatever charts we may eventually come upon. Is there anything else I'm forgetting, Blake? No, I think you think you about covered it. All right. Thanks for listening, and we will catch you guys next week. Peace out. Congrats on making it all the way to the end. We hope you enjoyed the show. You are now officially part of the PM and the AM fan base, the morning people, and we are super pumped to have you here. Now that you're a part of the crew, please share the episode with a friend, and make sure to check out the rest of our shows and social media content for more hilarious brackets, crazy questions, and an overall great time. Thanks for listening. It truly means a lot to us, and we'll catch you guys next week.